Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and today we're going to dive into GFCI protection for specific appliances. How I'm going to be doing my NEC changes videos from now on is we're going to show the 17, the 2020, and the 23. Half of the country is still on the 2017 and will be for the next three to six years. Part of the country is on the 2020 and will be for the next three to six years. And part of the country will be adopting the 2023 for the next three to 10 years, which is what my state's going to fall into the category. We're, uh, we're jumping straight from the 2017, skipping the 2020, and jumping into the 2023, but we don't know when it's going to be. And then it's probably going to stay that way for six years after that. So from now on, what I'm going to be doing is showing the code changes in all three of them. The 2017, I'm going to use that as the base code. And then what changed in the 2020. And now what's changing in the 2023. I am the Electrical Code Coach. Let's get to it. All right, so let's jump right into this code. It starts in 210.8D. And in the 2017, it lets us know that dishwashers are required to be GFCI protected in dwelling units. And we have to be very careful there. In this code cycle, it's in dwelling units. So we have to make that distinction there. The only issue is, is there is a whole list of other appliances that have to be GFCI protected that are not listed right here in 210.8D. Now in the 2017, they started making progress on this. And right at the beginning of 210.8 in highlighted text, meaning it's a revision or new, it lets us know that if you head over to 422.5, that there are other appliances that require GFCI protection. Well, if you weren't paying attention and it just be an informational note, you might miss that. So in the 2020, they did a little bit better. And I really like the change for the 2020. And it says in 210.8D that, hey, we don't want you to miss these things over in 422. If you're not familiar with 422, it's all about appliances. It's saying, hey, head to 422.5A and read that laundry list. And all of that has to be GFCI protected as well. So let's go ahead and head over there. Now we're reading from the 2020. And this section in the code was already there, 422.5. And in the 2017, they tried to throw us a bone and say, hey, don't forget about 422.5 because it counts too. And in the 2020, they just say, skip that. We're going to make 210.8 basically a note that says, hey, head over to 422.5a. And it has a list of sp some specific appliances. And it doesn't distinguish between it being a dwelling unit or commercial. It just says, hey, appliances that are identified in this section if they're 60 amps or less, single or three phase, they're required to have class A GFCI protection, which remember, like we've learned about previously on this channel, just here in the last few videos, that class A trips in the four to six milliamp range. And then there's a list of stuff here. And in the 2020, you have to do automotive vacuum machines, drinking water coolers and bottle filling stations, cord and plug connected high pressure spray washing machines, tire inflation machines, venting machines, sub pumps, and dishwashers. Now, only a few of these are new. Only a few of these are new. Some of these were already required in the 2017, but the new ones include dishwashers was added to this section and sub pumps, sump pumps, and cord and plug connected high pressure washing machines. There are some changes there. I highly recommend that you go read them. I'm not putting them up on the board because I don't want this to be a cheat sheet. I want you to look in the code yourself and I want you to understand what needs to be done. And you're not going to remember memorize everything anyways. You need to be able to always be able to look back and see. Well, that's great. But now where I normally get GFCI protection from in 210.8, now I've got to flip over to 422. So what they've done in the 2023 is even better. Now in the 2023 in 210.8, it just lists the appliances that are required. I love it. So you go there. I'm in, I'm reading from the 23 now because there are a bunch of additions that we need to make sure that we cover today. So reading from the 2023, these are the new additions 
and the reconfiguration of these specific appliances. In the 2023, it literally just lists them in order. It says this shall be provided for GFCI protection shall be provided for the branch circuit or outlet. That's important because it's not just receptacles, it's hardwired as well. For the following appliances that are rated 150 volts to ground or less, which is all of these appliances in a normal circumstance, 60 amps or less, and that doesn't matter if it's single or three phase. So if you do commercial work, pay attention right now. Now it just lists the appliances beneath it. So instead of sending you to 422.5, it just lists the appliances, and I'm going to list them now. Automotive vacuuming machines, drinking water coolers and bottle filling stations, high pressure spray washing machines. Doesn't matter if it's cord and plug connected or not. They change that. Tire inflation machines, venting machines, some pumps, dishwashers, electric ranges, counter-mounted cooking units, and wall-mounted ovens. I want you to listen to those last few. Electric ranges, counter-mounted cooking units, and wall-mounted ovens. All wall, and this doesn't matter if you're in commercial or residential. It's super important that we understand that. So now all ranges have to be GFCI protected if they're electric. And it doesn't distinguish between gas or not. Now it does say electric ranges for the range part, but the wall mounted oven and the counter mounted cooking unit, it didn't specify. Clothes dryers and microwave ovens. So whether you are in commercial or residential, now you have to GFCI protect all of these specific appliances. If you're in the 2017, you have to use Part D and head over to 422.5A. Then if you're in the 2020, all it tells you to do is head over to 422.5A. Then in the 2023, they do you even better and they just list the specific appliances and they add a bunch of appliances. Now, if you head over to 422.5A in the 2023 version, this is where we have room for improvement. So if you flip over there, it still says, hey, GFCI protected for these following appliances, but it doesn't list all of the new ones in that section. So what if you're an appliance man and you only live off of 422? Now you don't know that electric ranges, the microwave and all these other things are added to this laundry list. Now, they do add a little note saying, hey, you might have to go back to 210.8D, but in my opinion, that's where we need to make some improvements. So you may see in the 2026 where it says, hey, you know, one thing you might see in the 2026 is that in 422.5A, it says, hey, head back over to 210.8D and you need to satisfy all of these appliances. Or they might just put the entire list there because some appliance men don't go anywhere except for 422. And I understand that. So there is always room for improvement. I think the code making panels knocked it out of the park with this. I think it's getting better and better, but there's always room for improvement. And I'm not telling them what to improve. I'm just you know, pointing out that there's always room for improvement because every time we make a step forward, there's always new things that arise. I think it's something that we need to pay close attention to that now in 422.5, it does not list all of these new appliances. I think that's very important. So with that being said, this is the changes for the in, mainly in structure and in placement and with a lot of additions in the 2017, the 2020, and the 2023. This is how we're going to be doing all of our changes for probably the next five or six years because I've got areas that are on the 2017, the 2020, and the 2023. I'm super excited to be a part of your journey. I want to take just a moment today and really encourage you. I know it looks like the world's gone crazy and things are hard right now, but just keep working. If you just keep doing the stuff, you'll end up with the results that you're looking for. Whether you're working on your license, you're working in a different field, whatever it is, I just want you to know and I want to encourage you that you can do it, set your mind to it, and stick to it. You can accomplish it. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and I've dedicated my life to help you become everything that you can be in life and in the electrical industry. If there's anything that I can do for you, you can always just email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it.